presumably as the scientific world has moved on, this affects the human interaction with each other. I presume, and events. Yeah, it certainly does, but I think science is as much culturally informed as, as anything else. Certainly there's a, an empirical way of, of looking at the world or, sure. or building evidence yeah. or, or testing evidence. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I mean, take, take doctors, for example. I think, I think the medical profession is in a, a state of flux at the minute because previously there was this understanding that doctors were almost like God. They knew stuff that we, the people, didn't. Mm. And what they said was law. It was black and white, the doctor knows. Now people are going, mm, I kind of want a second opinion, or I've read this thing on the internet, yes. or I want to be part of this decision-making process because you don't know what's best for me. Mm. Um, and, you know, whether, whether to treat or not to treat, whether to, I mean, it's very um, relevant at the moment in terms of assisted dying and, and yeah. how we address and challenge and examine the, the challenges of, of end-of-life care yeah. Yeah. Um, is very relevant and culture informs that utterly. In terms of morals and taking that particular point, how has morality changed with anthropology and that social interaction? Would you say in the last I don't know, couple of hundred years, or are things, from a moral point of view, the same as they were a thousand years ago in certain societies? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I think it's it's very difficult to tell when you're looking at history, mm. um, because you're you're limited by mm. by what people have written down yeah. and or, or what evidence has been preserved. Um, I've I've done quite a lot of TV about archaeology as well, and I, yes. I feel like I always bring to it the question of well, what were the people doing? What it's, it's not for me really about the, the soil science or the stratification or the science of archaeology. For me, the, the real interest lies in trying to puzzle out what the people were doing. What, were, what did they think they were doing when they built Stonehenge, when they constructed a, a trackway across a, a marsh mm. in order to throw yeah. um, you know, bronze weapons into a bog? What, what on earth was going on in their heads? We could be saying the same about the Shard in, in 500 years' time. Well, exactly, I exactly. Yeah. I mean, maybe the Shard and, and Stonehenge are, are brilliant, comparable examples of, of, of monuments to ability and, and, you know, two fingers to gravity. You know, we're building these towers of Babel up to the heavens and going, yeah, yeah look at that. That's power, that's money, that's wealth, that's influence. Yeah. I think... I, I, th I actually think it's it's a brilliant comparison. Yeah. I think um, perhaps the Shard or um, uh, the the buildings in Dubai, yes. or, or trying to establish a you know a new city in in Qatar or Las Vegas. Yeah. I went to Las Vegas um, a couple of years ago, and I was struck by the utter reckless foolishness of attempting to build a city in the desert. There's no water. There's no shade. Yeah. Nothing grows there naturally. What on earth are we all doing there? And we, you know, it was initially, as I understand it, to, to kind of get get round the the licensing laws so that everyone could gamble. Sure. Um, but now it's 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 a kind of a triumph of a foolish human endeavour against Mother Nature, yeah. and that you can go and you know have a kind of fine dining experience and eat you know fresh asparagus that's been air freighted in or, or grown in some kind of biodome in the yeah. desert. Amazing. Foolish, but kind of brilliant. That's why <laughs> humans are infinitely fascinating. We certainly are. Marianne, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, thanks.